Today's presenters are Gus Chikala, who's the president and CEO of Product Assistance, as well as uh, Bill Gundrum, the Solutions Architect, who's uh, been with Product Assistance for a very long time. Gus founded Project Assistance uh, 22 years ago in 1996 uh, and is a recognized portfolio and project management expert who's published many popular articles and books on the subject. Uh, you take it away, Gus. Thank you, Daniel, and thank everybody for being here today, including our co-presenter, Bill Gundrum. Uh, so today, for today's agenda, we're going to cover um, the idea of making project failure obsolete, which is just some background on project assistance, uh, some challenges and opportunities for how using Microsoft Project and uh, to set up a project management office. Uh, we'll talk about the solution. There's going to be a couple uh, components here. We're going to talk about uh, a methodology for building a PMO. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the actual plan and what that looks like and how you can use Microsoft Project to build that plan, building the PMO methodology assets uh, that are going to be stored in Microsoft Project. So there'll be demos here and uh, delivering the value of the roadmap. And then uh, when we get to the end, we'll, as, Bill, as, as uh, Dan pointed out, we'll do some, uh, some questions and answers. Uh, Dan will be uh, monitoring the question monitor. So, so um, if and I'll, I'll try to watch it too. Sometimes I forget to do that. If we get if we get a live question that makes sense to uh, answer live, uh, we'll try to do that during the presentation itself. And uh, there's some parting gifts. Uh, we often get requests for the video. Uh, so we are recording this today. So if you have a friend or a colleague or uh, somebody else, or your boss, who might want to see this. Uh, usually within 24 to 48 hours, it'll be posted on our video page. So if you go to projectassistance.com, click on video. The other th the other question we get is uh, a copy of the slides. Now, we're going to have a lot of demo today, so the slides do not reflect the demo. So the video is probably more meaningful. But sometimes we still get a question uh, for the slides. The slides will be available in PDF, also posted in 24 to 48 hours. So. Um, if you could hold your emails uh, for a day or two, we get a lot of emails asking for the content. It will be out there. If you don't see it by Friday, let us know. So, you know, our beliefs as project assistants, we believe we can transform our world to a safer place for our children and grandchildren. And what that means is the innovation of projects. I, I love using an example of what Elon Musk is doing uh, to try to uh, try to save the uh, human race, right, to go to Mars, and uh, that. A project so that's one example of uh, protecting the entire human species but what we mean by that is our mission is to deliver the future into the present by making projects uh, successful project-based organization set successful uh, usually through the PMO uh, we believe we can eliminate project failure that's a belief we have and, and, and we have a, a lot of uh, support around that um, about the you know the failure for, through budgets through schedules through uh, bloated requirements or what we might call sco uh, uh, scope creep. And the way we do that is really supporting PMOs. Uh, there's two bullets there, the definition, deployment, and adoption, including Microsoft Project, which is really what we're talking about today. That's really our practice. And uh, we also do staff, uh, staff augmentations, project managers, BA, solution architects. Um, so that's uh, so the consulting practice. You'll see that in the slides. And um, And the first question about uh, the, uh, for today, to keep you an interactive, we have polls, and you should see a poll on your screen right now uh, asking for the, uh, what is the status of your uh, PMO in your organization? It doesn't exist, or some of the, some of the other questions are there. I'll, I won't read them to you. You can read them yourself. We'll give it about 30, second question, 30 seconds uh, to answer that question. And I'm not seeing the poll, Dan, so I know, I know you'll show when you think you have enough uh, respondents. Usually when we get a last, about 75% of the participation. Well, I think you'd be interested in the results. So uh, we've got 25% for all four answers. <laughs> well, okay. So um, that's interesting. So we have um, uh, a broad spectrum. You know, the, 
the one I, the number two, I call that the, the Moses model, you know, just, just putting policy out there. And, uh, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Uh, any comments from you, Bill, if you want to chime in, uh, feel free. No, it's interesting how it's so evenly spread. And that's, that's typically what we yeah. see. There's usually not one, one, uh, prescriptive solution of what a PMO looks like. It, uh, it, it adjusts to what the situation is, uh, requires. Yeah, thanks. And uh, so the ones on the lower end, give us a call. <laughs> uh, anyway, challenges and opportunities. Um, so, the, you know, the, the, the challenges hopefully turn into opportunities. Uh, creating standards that are easily accessed and updated uh, oftentimes is, is a challenge. Um, for those of you who know something about the Microsoft Project, Project Online, Project Server Platform, um, there's, there's SharePoint in there. So we'll, we'll, we'll show some um, uh, demonstrations of how have it have, have how we can make it easily accessed and updated. Uh, choosing a widely adopted solution platform to reduce uh, adoption challenges. Um, one of the reasons Microsoft Project is is so popular is it's it's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. It is you know it's it's part of the Microsoft Office suite. So uh, that's one uh, hurdle that project tends to get passed uh, over some of the competition. Uh, tying project management methods with project management tools. So, you know, we typically in the past have thought of Microsoft Project as a scheduling tool, uh, but now it's, you know, it's a lot broader and we'll show that today, how, how that connection happens between uh, sort of managing the schedule as well as uh, the work that happens behind that. Uh, the bridge, bridging the chasm between PM theory and PM, PM adoption. Um, that's that's you know an adoptable platform lends itself from getting theory off the shelf and into the hands of the practitioners, and uh, providing a solution that sets standards and and, and delivers. Um, again, these are these are mostly challenges, right? How how do you actually get the adoption out there by uh, a delivery platform that enables that? And it has to be intuitive. And so hopefully some some of what you see today will uh, meet that challenge. So we we talk about um, a number of methodologies that occur with projects. And, and we start here by talking about a methodology for how do you build a PMO? You know, what is, is there actually a methodology for building that? And as we know, um, uh, for, for the project managers or the people who are managing project managers, uh, we know that project methodologies follow a, a typical path in terms of defining uh, what the problem is, uh, designing a solution to that problem, building a solution to that problem, testing and rolling it out. And, you know, in, our, in the PMO build methodology is uh, similar to that. So, so when we talk about uh, organizations or how, you know, changing the organization or changing the culture. Um, if you've had an organization approach uh, to improve project management, we have another poll on this, so the poll should be open. So I'll let you read the questions and give your answers. I'll close it and post the results. And uh, we have a combined 80% between well-planned changes fully implemented and adopted uh, and plan and implement, but no discipline or follow-up. Uh, so a lot of planning and implementation. Uh, most people with uh, no adoption, but most at least planning and implementing. We had 20% answer uh, plan but don't deliver. Good. So with that, I'm sorry, the one I, I didn't pick up, well-planned changes fully implemented, what was the percentage on that? That was 27%. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Thanks, everybody. And, and I, 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 a quick apology. Um, we are dispersed. Uh, there's three people on this call, and we're in three separate rooms. We have a nor'easter. Uh, here in the Philadelphia area, and um, so you may hear a little bit more chatter between us that would usually be offline with hand signals. Uh, so I'm not seeing the poll when it comes in, so Dan's reading that to me. Thanks, Daniel. 
Um, so the, our, our methodology for building a project management office, we call it vision, implement, and adopt. And essentially, the way every time I think about methodology or I think about um, uh, delivering the deliverables of a project, you know, we, we think about architects, you know, we think about uh, solution architects. They, they could be an architect of a 50-story steel building. They could be the architect of a complex molecule that's going to uh, attack diseases, uh, even a biological large molecule. Uh, we can think about solution architect around IT. But at the end of the day, the question is, you know, how, how do you solve the problem that that your you know that, that this project was was begun? And I and we, the reason we call this the project project is is this idea of build, building a work breakdown structure or an approach or the how part of a charter that says how do we solve a problem of converting an organization from its current ways around project management and portfolio management uh, to a brighter future? So. Sometimes we call that change in the way you change. You know, when we think about our mission about making the planet a safer uh, environment, um, it's 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 a lot of change, right? It's it's going from where we are today and evolving into a future. And and the real question here is, how does an organization? Uh, uh, did I lose my connection? You see my screen, Dan? Your screen hasn't been showing. I'm trying to get you back up. Okay. Um, so give me a pause here for a second. Uh, sharing. Let me see. I'm going to click show my screen again. There you are. You're live. Okay. okay thanks. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, I got to waiting for a, a presenter. So um, we're also. Let me stop. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you for SK. Uh, via methodology. So, so anyway, we're talking about a work breakdown structure, right? What is the approach to uh, transform an organization to get better at project management? So this is kind of our methodology. Right? We call it vision, implement, adopt, via. Um, and I'm not going to go deeply into this. The point is, you know, we use Microsoft Project to do this. Like, you know, for example, when we get into the vision phase of uh, what I would call a traditional gap analysis, but now focused on a portfolio project management uh, approach, the, the question is, how, you know, how do you build a plan, right? How do you get a plan to transform an organization to be successful? And we, we call it a PMO. I mean, it doesn't have to be, right? The question is, how do you make an organization be more successful in how it delivers its commitments around their projects so that it does, in fact, deliver the mission of the organization? Um, so. So when we think about this, um, these are tasks, right? And, and when we think about how does Microsoft Project um, support that, the idea is uh, we call the roadmap, which is the outcome from current state, future state, what are we going to change? What we see is sometimes a, a series of initiatives. You know, there may be methods changes, there may be um, uh, skills changes, there may be organizational changes. Um, oftentimes, there's all those things. Um, as a matter of fact, if you look at the four dimensions here on slide 16, we, you know, you, we see these uh, what, what we call dimensions: process, technology, people, organization, governance, which is organizational change management as well. And and so when you think about how many sort of uh, simultaneous in initiatives or sequence initiatives, and oftentimes both, right? That we do, uh, do you do waves uh, in, in some in some of these efforts. Um, there's a plan, right? So how do you build the plan? Well, we call that a roadmap, and um, and I call that, that a mini portfolio of initiatives. It's 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 a it's a you know you might, you might call it a program depending uh, how tightly uh, integrated those initiatives are, or or, or sometimes uh, uncoupled, right? We could be talking about modifying financial systems are going to bring project costs into a uh, into a system. We might be uh, interacting with uh, human resource systems. Um, uh, Timesheet tracking systems, all those kinds of things, right? So, um, uh, HR descriptions of jobs. Uh, now that we're changed in the way um, that we deliver our projects, so so we talk about a mini portfolio of initiatives. You know, the approach gu gu guided by a project template, right? We we have a template called the VIA methodology. Defines a series of PMO initiatives on a priority phase uh, schedule. Here's a a simple example. This is a, a Microsoft project um, plan. And uh, and by the way, if I actually if I actually went into this plan, which I shall do uh, quickly, 
forgot to bring up projects, so I apologize for that, but just for a minute. Here is um, something called the sample roadmap. And the only reason I'm bringing this up is this, the screen I showed you is not showing all the detail, right? So in this case, we could say, you know, what's missing in the roadmap and what are the recommendations? Um, if we go into a recommendation to uh, full demand for project managers and PMO leadership, we can scroll down here and see even more uh, information. So, so this is just kind of, kind of the point of um, these are a lot, lot of initiatives. These 10 recommendations are in many ways different projects, right? So here's a capability where we can now go back to a work breakdown structure, and you can see that there's, I, I summarized uh, in this case 161 uh, different uh, tasks. And in this case, it, it's only detailed only in phase one. As we get into phase two and phase three, we would expect to see more and more detail come into this. This is a very uh, sort of uh, abbreviated example. Okay, so that's one example of using project, you know, to really uh, um, define the PMO. Now, the other thing is, what, what about all the pieces, right? When we start thinking about what comes out of a roadmap, we start thinking about the templates um, that happen, and I'll, I'll, I'll stop for a second because I see there's a poll open right now. Sorry, I for, for, forgot about that, Dan. And I believe you should be able to see the results if you wanted to click on the uh, go to webinar flower. Go to webinar flower in my console? I, would, I, would think so. I have that. I have the console, but I don't know where I look on the console. It has sharing, webcam, audio, dashboard, attendees. Oh, polls. Okay. There you go. Huh, thank you. Okay, so 29% doing the right projects, 33% project planning, 60% project execution, 40% project overwrite. Okay. So this was a multiple answer. And so, okay. And what we mean by doing the right projects, we'll get into that on the portfolio side, really defining what the portfolio is, the planning, the execution, and the oversight. Okay, good. So um, I think everybody else can see that as well, so thank you. Um, so what I was starting to say is, you know, when we think about these pieces around the portfolio, the planning, execution, oversight, and, and what I would call the assets that have to be built, right? So we're going to get into now this idea that if we've built a plan to make project management more effective through a more effective PMO using project, we start thinking about the templates, right? What, what kind of projects are we doing? Are we doing big projects, small projects? Maybe both. Are we doing um, uh, maintenance? Are we doing uh, uh, product development? Are we doing all those things? Some PMOs um, are enterprise project management uh, offices. We've seen um, PMOs that are doing product development um, and also the uh, back-end infrastructure with IT. So, so what does that mean? Well, it means there's a lot of assets, right? When we think about the process of, uh, for example, Microsoft Project Templates, uh, we think about the tasks in those templates, we think about uh, the processes that are connected to those tasks, um, that's where we want to go with this, right? We have a plan, now how do we get this, uh, this structure for a project management office and how does Microsoft Project support that? So let's, let's take a look at that. So uh, we talk about oftentimes, the, you know, the three methodologies in a PMO. You've got a portfolio methodology. You've got a, a solution delivery uh, methodology. Some of the examples I just showed, and I'll show a picture in a minute, and the project management methodology. So there's there's a, there's a number of just sort of iterations we think about. Most projects you know, at the point of execution have have one of these solution deliveries and one of these a project management. Two sets of tasks. One is what I would call at the bottom right hand, uh, if, I, if, I, if I show a picture of these methodologies, at the bottom right hand, we have this methodology called project and program management that is what I would call the business controls, right? Uh, I'm the project manager, I'm the business owner, I'm driving the business of the project. My methodology, uh, the PMBOK, let's say, uh, tells me how to deliver on time on budget. I'm also responsible for quality or customer satisfaction. And that's this whole deli uh, solution delivery uh, life cycle, right? So um, we'll get the portfolio in the back a little bit. I have a couple slides on that, so hold on that. But let's just talk about solution, solution delivery. What kind of templates might we have, right? So if we think about a sample of methodology templates, we think about this, this what I call the uh, horizontal 
methodology cuts across all the projects is, is this idea of the project, how we get the schedule and the cost and the labor figured out, right? The, uh, the other methodologies we think about are how do we develop new products? Uh, what are the IT methods? And there's a lot we can think about there, right? Under product development, we can think about um, the FDA uh, putting, uh, you know, uh, drugs into humans. Uh, or we can think about consumer products. Or uh, over here on the third column, aerospace and defense is really another way of, of doing product development. Uh, I mentioned the 50 story steel buildings, right, the architectural engineering designing methodologies, the corporate initiatives about mergers and acquisitions and some of the things that happen at the strategic level, their projects as well. The, and, and these are transformational, right? So, so the real question is, you know, how, how, does, how does Microsoft Project deliver all the assets, all the structure uh, to enable these solutions to be delivered, to solve the problems that your organization is really trying to solve? So, so to that end, um, I would like to uh, pass the baton uh, to my colleague, Bill Dundrum. Bill's going to uh, come up with some demo here. If all the technology works just right, you'll see Bill's screen pretty soon. Okay. Are we seeing my, scene, my screen with Microsoft Project? Yes, sir. Thanks, Bill. Okay, good. So uh, what we're going to do is to show you, uh, as Gus discussed, discuss the different templates, uh, the methodology or the, the system lifecycle on how you do projects. And there are quite a few that are capabilities that come with, with projects. Some of them are built in, and uh, some you can uh, create your own templates and standards and operating procedures. And so we'll show a little bit of, of each. We're starting out here with Microsoft Project, the desktop tool that, they're, that most of us are familiar with. And uh, it comes prepackaged with a set of uh, templates. So if I just click on File and go to New, you'll see there are, are a large list of templates here available for us. And we'll just pull up a couple of these just to, to show some examples. Uh, if I click here on Commercial Construction, if you're in the construction and en construction engineering space, it gives you a little preview. And if we click on Create, so here it shows. Uh, it comes. It has the work breakdown structure already set up for us. It has uh, the, uh, the dependencies with predecessor relationships, and even uh, generic uh, resource uh, resource allocation categories. So, uh, so there are quite a few you know, pre-built for you. It gives you a really good starting place. This is another fairly new feature with Project. Is the timeline up at the top where you can, uh, for uh, quick illustrative uh, purposes, you can. Uh, add milestones or, or key tasks into this little graphic and easily share this graphic um, in your status reports or PowerPoint, sharing emails. And uh, so you see these all come prepackaged right out of the box. Let's go to another template here just to, to show a completely different approach. So that one was for commercial construction. And uh, let's Did we lose Bill? We lost your voice, Bill. I don't know if you can even hear us. So we we might have lost him for a minute. So if you could just, if everybody could just stand by for a minute, that would be great. We hope everyone uh, else in the Northeast is staying safe out there. If I click here on issues, it's the same basic approach. So a risk is something that we were uh, planning for, hopefully early in the project, and identifying things that could go wrong and what are we going to do about it. 
whereas an, an issue is something, either a risk that has materialized or something that has come up that we, we uh, didn't plan for and need to uh, put an, an action plan and escalate that to management and get a uh, resolution on the issues. This one here for changes, this doesn't come with it, but these are just SharePoint lists, so it was real easy for us to add in uh, a way of tracking our changes and keeping a log of all the, uh, the schedule, scope, cost changes uh, in the same fashion uh, as uh, the, the, the risks and issues that comes out of the box. Okay. And Gus, I believe that was what we want to cover in this segment. Anything else that you wanted to bring up? No, 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 that's good. So I'll, I'll go to the next section, and um, thanks for thanks for that part. I'm going to make myself the presenter. Hopefully, you're seeing my screen. Yep. Okay. So, so when we talk about, you know, so what Bill was showing was a lot of the stuff around what you build around the schedule, some of the data around the schedule, um, the things we would have known as a as an MPP file. And now what we want to talk about is um, what we call the methodology assets, right, the process documentation. So when we think about um, templates for a project charter or design documents, um, different kinds of technologies you might use to, uh, to, to do that, there's a, a, a couple of capabilities worth thinking, thinking about. What we're talking about today is building a PMO, right? So, so the one aspect we can think about is the standard and the assets, as it says in the first column here, the process documentation, the deliverable artifacts as standards. What does that mean? Well, if I start a new project, I build show the show the template of the work breakdown structure, which is the you know the how the the solution the methodology, but there's all this uh, intellectual capital behind that, right? What, what what's the procedure to build a project charter? What is the um, uh, the understanding of who's responsible for doing the design document and what is, what is the workflow and is it mandatory or not mandatory? You know, where do we find all that information? We wouldn't see that, you know, in, in a row in a Microsoft project plan that says uh, create the design of the solution. So so these these additional um, assets are, are really that additional intellectual property what, what, again, from a methodology standpoint, that's the standard. How do you get that delivered? Hey, I just picked a, a project that says I'm going to build a new drug um, to, to, to fight a disease. Um, what comes with that? You know, how, how do I do submissions to the FDA? What's the methodology for the, for the uh, technical writing or the medical writing for that, that, for that task? Uh, that's the standard, right? Then the other one is now I'm starting a new project. How do I get these things delivered to me? You know, if it's nice that we have the standards, but how do I get my own set of these things? How do I manage these things? How do I build these assets, these design documents, et cetera, and, and work with my team? So, you know, in the last column here, it says collaborate and publish process docu documentation. Yes, as a standard, but then also at the point of execution for a specific project. So that's really what we want to think about in this, uh, this next part. About you know how we deliver the value of the ma of, of the roadmap, and um, so so um, we're going to talk about uh, those assets, and we're also going to talk about this uh, portfolio methodology. Bill, did you want to do the asset um, demonstration or before the portfolio, or should I just go through this part as well? Uh, yeah, you you do this part. Okay. So, so we're, the, the other thing about, you know, back, back at the pyramid that we had, um, what we called the, uh, the um, I'm sorry, it was right here. It was the, uh, the, the pyramid that talks about the methodologies, right? So now we're at the top of the pyramid here talking about how do we propose, you see these four downs here, propose, select, measure, and respond. And what we want to talk about now is what is that process, right? How, how do we propose a project? How do we compare uh, multiple proposals for a bunch of projects to fill a portfolio with the li limited resources, with the limited dollars, um, what's the right mix? You know, I, I compare that to your retirement investments that, you know, some are risky and some have higher gains uh, based on their risk. Um, what's, what's the right mix, right? So, so there's this process, right? Uh, the, the, the collection, and management of the, of, the, of the project request, right? How do we standardize the, the collection of ideas? How do you conduct 
initial business value uh, prior to investing in the, into the feasibility, right? What's the, uh, how do you ensure alignment of requests to a business strategy, right? So, so the, that's one of the questions we would say, is this the right project, right? The other thing is uh, business case management, right? How, what's the common cost benefit analysis? And again, we, have to, we can think about a template. What, what's the standard? Um, how, how do we do an apples and apples comparison across a, a, you know, a, a wide variety of ideas and, and sort of uh, bring them to a common denominator to make them comparable? The, uh, the idea of um, the high level costs and, you know, and the benefits that, that come out of these, these, these templates, the, um, uh, the baseline to say uh, what, you know, the, 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 the penultimate um, of this whole project is going to be, or this portfolio process is talk about, did we get the benefit? Well, the first question is, what's, what's, what's the measurement, right? What's the baseline? What, what, are we, what are we promising? And then so we can validate that at the end of a, of, of, of a project. Um, uh, now bringing bringing these you know these business pieces together uh, to uh, compare to score to give the most efficient way to make these investments right the uh, selection and approval this is a sort of a four dimensional uh, capability here the bubble chart right that shows uh, something about the cost and the risks and the and the return and the, and the degree of difficulty how do we how do we you know look at this picture and, and make the right selections and, and approve the right projects across uh, multiple executives, um, different levels of investment, different uh, even an expert judgment comes into this sometimes, and and you know just well, what's the right mix is really what it comes down to, which we call the right projects. Uh, delivering the value, of the roadmap is you know um, how do you do this in, in Microsoft Project? There's a there's a, again thinking about that that standardization of pulling all these things together and comparing and and, and actually casting a picture is really what we're talking about. So uh, for this next part, I'll go back to Bill again. I just hit to send the pre presenter, so you should have it now, Bill. Hopefully the Nor'easter will be kinder to you this time. <laughs> there you go, yes. I see your screen. So are we seeing my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So, uh, so we're looking at the the portfolio of projects again, and uh, so, so as Gus was just uh, just mentioning, where you really can show value as a PMO is helping the organization with the investments and selecting the right projects. So, Project Online has a whole strategy uh, feature built into it, and what it does is it lets you identify your goals and strategies from the organization, and then uh, score your projects against those and lets us know where we should be making our investments. So uh, here we've identified example uh, strategic drivers, and if I just click on this one for cost savings, uh, behind the scenes here, we would uh, uh, describe what the different levels of cost savings are. The more descriptive we can become here, the, the less it is somebody uh, gaming the system and trying to get their project through. So here we've just said, uh, for savings or cost avoidance, the value less than 25,000 is no uh, no value or low, and then moderate 25 to 125,000, and then all the way through extreme is above uh, 250,000. So all of these different drivers have those those levels that you uh, create your uh, your description of what low through extreme means, and then you can do a, a pairwise comparison according to the, uh, across those those uh, strategies. And that tells you what's more important and less important to the organization. And then you, uh, you score your, your projects, and, and then uh, this will tell us, you can create these scenarios of which, which projects we want to include in the portfolio analysis. Might be all of your projects. Maybe you only want to uh, look at projects across a certain department, or maybe customer-facing projects, internal investments. And uh, then you set these scenarios. So I'm just going to click on one of these scenarios that we have set. And uh, there was another screen that, that, that I didn't show earlier. For each of those strategic drivers on the, the project that we, we, every project we create, we can rate how well those projects score. And then also as a por project manager, or a portfolio manager, sorry, when you're creating this portfolio analysis, you can also either override 
uh, what what the uh, the project managers have set, or maybe your policy says it's only done through the portfolio investment. The project manager gets involved much later after a project is is uh, uh, approved. So the portfolio management team could be the ones that set all those the scoring and the ranking on the individual different projects. So in, in this case here, now we're uh, let me go back to the cost analysis. So these are all the projects that we've selected to analyze in this this portfolio. And uh, we have a, uh, a plan cost, uh, a budget of $6 million. So what it did over here is it looks and sees how well, according to this priority, how well uh, that project aligns, where, what our uh, return on investment is, according to those uh, organizational strategic uh, drivers. And uh, so here we see that this pricing changes has the biggest impact for us across all those different drivers that we've identified. And based on our budget of $6 million, these above the line say these are the projects that we should work on uh, according to the alignment and the money we have available. And down here are the ones that are not going to give us the most value. So now if we say let's increase our budget to be $7 million and do a recalculate, we can see uh, what that does for our, our portfolio. And you'll see now, uh, based on the value, the strategic alignment and the money we have available, it says we should now work on this corporate center consolidation project and not do the ERP upgrade because it doesn't give us as much strategic value. But by increasing the budget, we had enough money to bring that project in. And you can override this and, and set your portfolio and, and commit to the portfolio. But it's just really nice that, that it figures out that alignment and tells you where your, your best investment potential is. And then. Let me just go back and I and, uh, also want to show one with resource impacts. So based on, on the projects that we had the budget to do that have been selected, now it's going to analyze across our, our resource demands and say, do we have enough people in the various roles to uh, execute these projects? And it gives us a Gantt chart view, but if I click here on the, the details, now it's going to show us uh, full-time equivalents and the allocations on all the different roles that we have identified and then down where those roles fill in the project. If we have projects where we didn't have enough people that would show in red and then just like we did that scenario model with increasing the budget, we could increase and say what happens if I hire five resources? It'll, it'll look and see where do you have shortages and tell, and tell you maybe you don't have to hire five, maybe you'll have to hire two project managers, and then you can get the, 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 uh, the, the work done on those projects where you have the, uh, don't have enough staff. Okay. So a lot of capabilities here in, in how you uh, analyze and, and select the right projects. And then, uh, of course, one of the big questions always comes then is, is uh, what are the reporting capabilities so we can analyze our overall portfolio, uh, the investments, and our performance against the projects that we've selected. So if we go to the report section, I have a few of these open. So this one, there are uh, three re reports that come out of the box with Project Online. And uh, well, this one is a Project Overview Dashboard. And uh, so it, it lets us see uh, if we wanted to we toggle between, I had to refresh here. If we wanted to toggle between different projects, um, if we just click there, it's going to readjust all the, the data behind here. You see this is rendered in Excel. We're looking at Excel online, part of the, uh, the project online solution, but you can open these directly into uh, Excel. Uh, so uh, it's nice that it gives you a, an Excel front end to all these, these reports here. Another option is um, you, there's a, a, a data protocol where you can easily extract all of your project information out of project online's database and pull it into Excel and then you can create your own, uh, it, it'll generate a pivot table automatically, but then you can create your own reports. And uh, so here, these are just using Excel charts and Excel slicers. And uh, so it's just a, a dashboard screenshot of, of a, a couple different, uh, this was looking at investment portfolio. This one shows I think when I lost my connection, I 
have all sorts of information. The next one down below, let's see if it refreshes here, is uh, your, your resource uh, demands and capabilities. But again, just with Excel and, and slicers, it looks like it's not going to, to load. The other option we have is uh, Power BI. Is, uh, so it's business intelligence, that's Microsoft's business intelligence platform. And it comes with a set of uh, dashboards out of the box that are free with Project Online. You just in install the app, and then you ha have all these different uh, uh, ways of analyzing your portfolio. So looking at uh, dashboards and, and the timelines, if you want to look at uh, resources and resource availability capabilities. And a lot of these resource availability pieces are, are also built into Project Online where you can dynamically uh, select the resources out of your pool and see their capacity and uh, and where you have over allocations, under allocations, and, and analyze the demand. And so just a lot of things uh, that come prepackaged for you. If we click on the risks, this will let us see our risks across uh, the entire uh, project and by the categories. So if you were specifying your own your own categories, it uh, lets you start to hone in and see where you have common problems uh, across the, the entire organization. Okay. Gus? Thanks, Bill. Good timing. I was just give you that, getting ready to give you that five-minute warning. <laughs> okay. Let's go back. I'm going to share my screen. There we go. So today's uh, webinar, I'll summarize it and talk about the parting gifts, making project failure obsolete. That was just talking about our VIA methodology, which is um, vision, implement, and adopt. Challenges and, and opportunities, we talked about you know, bringing standards together and templates uh, through uh, PMO standards uh, reflected in a Microsoft project solution. Um, we went through a number of ways of how the solution supports the development of a project management office. Um, we're gonna, we have a couple minutes for questions here. Uh, do we have any questions, Dan? Uh, yes, we had one question about uh, how much of the demonstration is available, um, you know, on the desktop versus Project Online. Yeah. Uh, so, so the, the first part was Microsoft Pre Professional uh, with the templates. Uh, in terms of the server side, there is really two options, right? There's the on-premise, which is traditional Microsoft Project Server, as it's called. So Microsoft Project Professional connects to Project Server. Uh, the other, the other uh, uh, Office 365 version of that is, is still conceptually the same. It's Project Server, but it's in a Microsoft-hosted environment with the rest of your Office 365. So Bill was showing the Office 365 version. If we brought up the Microsoft Project Server version, it would be virtually identical. I mean, unless we went through the login and you see sort of the security layer, other than that, the interface is uh, virtually the same. There are some back-end differences, uh, especially on the reporting side. Um, so if you have, uh, if anybody has any additional uh, questions about uh, some of the finer nuances of, um, for example, that, you know, going to the database and, and, and doing customizations, that's a little bit different. But in terms of what you saw today, it's identical between server and uh, Office 365. Uh, any other questions, Dan? Okay, we got the poll open. Would you like us to follow up? I'm sorry. Yeah, that was the uh, the main question we had. That pretty much covered the other ones we had about any advice for people um, just using Project Pro. Okay, so you guys actually got the poll open. So while the poll is open, um, I just you know, show that. If, okay, thanks. So, so we'll follow. If anybody wants to follow up, you'll hear from us. Um, the parting gifts we've got. Um, uh, we've talked about the webinar. The, there's the. Um, there'll be the slides and the video within 24 to 48 hours. There's a promo code uh, for the book. Um, my book, Microsoft Project using Microsoft uh, Project Management using Microsoft Project. This is 2013, there's a 2016 version out there as well if you're interested. Um, downloads for the slide deck and the webinar, we talked about that. There's a free chapter 
of our training guide. Um, I think it's label 2013. It hasn't changed in terms of some of the uh, dashboard capabilities uh, right inside project on the desktop. So we that was that was the sort of the biggest chapter when we did the 2013 book. So if you want a version of that, that's also available. I'm sorry, I should say uh, this first link here, projectassistance.com slash webinar, is where you see, uh, for example, a free chapter of the training guide. Um, so what I want to do is just uh, thank everybody for joining us today. Um, hopefully you got something out of that. If you have interest in follow-up, uh, I see some some uh, familiar faces out there. So hello um, from Project Assistance, and hopefully we'll hear from you uh, in the future. So thank you, everybody, and I uh, hope you have um, a good rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.